What do you think about our group chat, Zoe? I'm not sure why Rick stopped the conversation. I think he did it because he wanted people to be polite, and he wanted to stop the chat before it became a big argument. Think is a very helpful rule to follow. What about Annie's message? Was it a good idea to post it? Well, I believe that she had a terrible day, but it can't be true that bad things always happen to her. So it was also a bit too negative. Yeah, I don't think it was necessary to share all her problems online like that. I agree. And what about Pedro's reply? Well, what can I say? I thought it wasn't kind. It's a really bad idea to use all capital letters online, and the worst thing about it was the rude ending. True, that wasn't helpful at all. Was it necessary to reply to her? No, it wasn't. My grandmother always said, "If you can't say something nice, say nothing." She was right. And what about Ola's reply? Hmm. Her message wasn't clear. I mean, was she serious or was it a joke? I'm not sure. Maybe it was a bad joke because it wasn't funny or kind. Yeah, you're probably right. Do you ever imagine what life was like in the 1980s? What did people do when tablets and smartphones didn't exist? I have no idea. Things are so different now. Did you hear about that family of four from Ontario? In 2014, they spent one year living like it was 1986. Wow. Why did they do that? Well, it was all the idea of the parents of the family, Blair and Morgan. At the time, Blair was twenty-seven and Morgan was twenty-eight. They had two young sons, and they were worried because their children didn't want to play outside. The boys, who were five and three, spent all day looking at screens inside the house. So, the parents decided to see if they could live in a time without the internet or digital devices. They chose 1986 because they were both born then. <laughs> Incredible! So tell me, how did it go? Well, they did a lot differently. For example, they wore clothes from 1986. And they read paper maps and checked facts in real books, like dictionaries, instead of using the internet. Really? So, what technology did they have then? In 1986, people didn't have MP3 players, CDs, or DVDs. In fact, they listened to music on cassette tapes. And watched films on video cassettes instead, like Top Gun, the most popular film of 1986. The two boys could play the Super Mario video game because the Nintendo games console came out in 1985. Oh, and they didn't use digital cameras; they could only use Polaroid or film cameras. And the photos cost a lot to print. Did they print the photos online? No, they needed to go to shops instead. And every time they wanted cash, they went into the bank because online banking didn't exist in 1986. They could use bank cards in shops, but they couldn't buy anything online, of course. <laughs> Did visitors do the experiment too? Yes. When friends came, they put their tablets and phones in a box, 
and they didn't return them until their friends went home. What part did the family find most difficult? Um. Well, the parents missed modern digital devices. They thought the biggest problem was chatting with others. They had an old telephone, but their family and friends didn't want to make phone calls. They didn't have any group chats, messages, or texts, so they lived in a very different world from their friends.、Hmm. How did the experience go in the end? They spent a lot of time together as a family and talked with each other more. This was probably because they didn't spend hours scrolling through social media. So, actually, they thought it was an amazing experience.、Mm, I imagine it was. Hello, welcome to the program. People say that young people today can't live without their digital devices. Is this true? Right now, I'm on the streets of Manchester, talking to teenagers about this subject. First, let's speak to Rex Harding. Rex is 18 years old. He's from London, but he's here in Manchester because he's studying technology at university. Rex, hello. Hi. Rex. You told me earlier you became interested in technology when you were very young. That's true. My parents are both into technology, and they think it's very important. They bought me my first mobile phone when I was five years old, and a laptop when I was eight. I enjoyed using them. And I found technology very easy to understand. I liked school, and I worked hard, but I couldn't wait to get home and go online. Was that a problem? Many young people find social media difficult. No, because it wasn't only about social media. I did other interesting things. I created my own website. I did my homework online. Also, my parents realised that it's important not to look at a screen all the time. They took my phone at bedtime, and we had no mobile phones at lunch and dinner time. And every week, we did a digital detox. No technology for twenty-four hours. Great, thanks, Rex. That's very interesting. Now, let's speak to this young lady. You know the big dreams you had when you were younger about what life is like as a teenager. You mean dreams that don't always become true? Yeah, I guess. But all kids dream about what they're going to be like when they're older, and we often think that life is going to be totally amazing. But that's not always true. So, what is it really like to be sixteen or seventeen? Well, we are, and it's not so exciting. <laughs> As a kid, my dreams were. Big. I thought that teenagers spent all their time with their friends going out, but in real life, it isn't like that at all. When I'm not at school or exercising, I'm at the library studying so I can go to college and then go to university. While I'm there. I often start dreaming about how I'm going to share a house with other students, learn to cook, get a degree in business, and work for an international company. I want to become a top manager. It's good to dream big, right? <laughs> 
When I was younger, I thought that all YouTubers immediately became rich. At 14, I wanted to earn a lot of money from my videos. I told everyone I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 16. I'm going to have an expensive car and a driver and I'm going to become famous. But in reality, my first video got 25 likes and I'm not famous at all. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Now I'm a bit more realistic. I'm working hard to save money for university. I want to go to drama school and become an actor. Oh, and I want to learn to drive. I'm not going to get a driver any time soon. <laughs> We had very big dreams as kids, but I think that's a good thing. Sure, not all our dreams came true, but we're still young. And we've got an awesome vlog, and we make some money from it. I think we're living the dream. <laughs> yeah, me too. What about you? Why don't you share some of your dreams with us? And please give us a like or comment so we can keep dreaming big. See you guys soon. Bye. Do you know what you want to do when you leave school? Do you want to go to college or university and get a degree? Would you like to work for an international company and become a top manager after that? Most high school students have got big dreams. However, many find it difficult to make them come true when they leave school. For this reason, we at Greenwood College think it is important to help our students follow their dreams. Our college has got many interesting and creative courses on offer. For example, drama for future actors. But the best thing about our college is we are very practical. Firstly, we always organise work experience for our students. You don't earn any money doing work experience. However, you can try working in different jobs. This can help you decide which you like and which you don't like. And secondly, we also believe that life skills are really important. Many students share a house while they study, so we also offer useful classes in the evenings or at the weekends. For example, you can learn how to manage your time better or how to cook meals. You can even learn to drive a car, as our college has got a driving school. We at Greenwood College understand how important your dreams are. So we are very happy to talk to you about your future goals. And we can help you choose the right course to achieve them. Call us now to find out more. Guys, are you going to the New Year's Eve celebrations in the main square? I don't know, Jess. What events are there going to be? Well, Tom, there's going to be street theatre, dancing, and there are going to be some concerts too. Oh, and of course, at midnight, there's going to be a big show with music and beautiful fireworks over the river. That's right, Maddie. Wow. In that case, I'm going to join you. It sounds like it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be expensive too. Aren't you going to join us, Simon? No, I'm not. I'm going to stay at home with Mum and Dad, and I'm not going to spend any money. 
Oh, that's a shame. Quiet, please, Jess. Sorry, Miss Blake. OK. What's the answer to question number four, please? What are your goals for the new year, Simon? This year, I'm going to save money. Why are you going to do that? Because I want to learn to drive next year and the lessons are really expensive. I see. How are you going to achieve it? I usually buy a lot of things online with my bank card because it's easier. But I'm not going to do that this year. I'm only going to buy things with cash so I can see exactly how much money I'm spending. Good idea, Simon. How much money are you going to try to save? Um... I don't know yet. As much as I can. And you, Jess? What's your New Year's goal? Which one? Last year I had two, and this year I couldn't decide what to do, so I've got three. Firstly, I bought four new books recently because I want to read more. Secondly, I'm going to turn off my phone in the evening so I can go to bed earlier. And finally, the most important one is I'm going to do an IT course. Why are you going to do that? Because I want to learn how to design websites. It's my dream to have my own company one day. What type of company do you want? I can't tell you. It's a secret. All I can say is, I'm going to earn a lot of money and have many people working for me. <laughs> wow! Are you going to do that when you leave school? No, I'm not. First, I'm going to study business at university. Then I'm going to travel around the world for a year. Then I'm going to start my company. Good luck. Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to prepare a presentation in four steps. Are you ready? First, we're going to look at the subject of your presentation. You need to decide what you are going to talk about and what information to include. Then decide what order to put your ideas in. For example, always start with an introduction and make sure you have a conclusion at the end. Next, I'm going to talk about how to make your presentation interesting. You can use photos to do this, but make sure you choose good ones. Then you always need to practice what you are going to say and how you are going to say it. You can ask your friends or family to watch you and then they can tell you what they think. Finally, I'm going to end my talk with how to give your presentation well. Firstly, always look at the audience. And remember, they aren't going to understand you if you speak quickly or too quietly. So always speak loudly and clearly. OK, are there any questions? <laughs> right. Let's start thinking about the first step, which is what to include in your presentation. Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my dreams. First, we're going to look at my dream board. As you can see, there are four things that I'd love to do one day. 
I chose this photo because when I finish school, I'm going to travel around the world. In particular, I want to go to Australia because it's got amazing beaches for surfing and swimming. Next, I want to talk about these two pictures. In this photo, we can see a university. I chose this photo because I hope to get a degree in English in the future. After that, I want to become an actor because I am very interested in theatre and films. In the other picture, we can see a house because I hope to be famous and earn a lot of money one day. And I'd like to buy my parents a big house just like this one. Finally, I'm going to end my talk with my most important point, which is I think everybody needs to dream big in life. I know the future isn't going to be easy for me, but I'm never going to give up on my dreams. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Right. You think of a job, then I'm going to ask you a maximum of 10 questions about it, and you can only answer yes or no. Then I'm going to try to guess what your job is. OK. My first question is, do you work in a hospital? No, I don't. Hmm. Do you help other people? Yes, I do. Do you travel to other countries? No, I don't. Hmm. Do you wear a uniform? Yes, I do. Ah. Is your work sometimes dangerous? <laughs> yes, it is. Do you drive a special car? Yes, I do. <laughs> Are you a police officer? Yes, I am. Well done. Now, Suki, I'm going to give you two photos and I'd like you to compare them, please. Right. Um, in the first photo, there are some people working in the country. They look like farm workers. And I can see they're picking something. Um, maybe strawberries? And they're putting them in boxes. In the second photo, I can see four people in a clean white room. There are some pictures of the human body. So maybe they're in a hospital? I think they're probably nurses, doctors, or maybe dentists. Both photos are quite similar because they both show jobs and teams. And both photos show people working together to achieve a goal. The two photos are different because the first one shows people outside. But the second one shows people inside a building. It looks like they are wearing their own clothes in the first photo. But in the second photo, they're wearing uniforms. The type of work that they show is different too. The first photo shows people doing a hard physical job 
and they aren't talking to each other. But the second photo shows two people standing, and two people sitting behind a desk. I think they're discussing something, and looking for information in a book. In my opinion, it is easier to be a farm worker than a doctor. I think. Being a farm worker is better because I prefer working outside than looking after ill people. <laughs> And um. Okay, thank you, Suki. Hi all! Another school year is almost over, and our summer holidays are going to start very soon. But where to go? We asked two other vloggers called Dan and Lily. They're brother and sister, like us. They've travelled to all kinds of exciting places, and today they're going to tell us a bit about their favourite holidays and city breaks. So over to you, Dan and Lily. Hey guys. That's right. We love talking about travel. So here are our favourite places. My favourite was our holiday to Buenos Aires. It was incredible, apart from the journey. That is, we went there by plane, and the flight was over thirteen hours. Oh, <laughs> but. When we got there, everything was amazing. Buenos Aires has got excellent public transport, including an underground system, trams, and buses that run from early in the morning until late at night. So it's really easy to see all the sights. We also went on this brilliant walking tour where we saw areas like La Boca. We saw the famous football stadium, and then we went to Palermo. There were lots of fantastic shops and restaurants, and all this on foot for four hours. <laughs> I was so hungry. I ate lots of empanadas. I needed the energy. They were delicious. Okay, now it's my turn. We have visited a lot of places in Europe on city breaks too. Places like Paris, Berlin, and Vienna. Actually, when we were in Vienna. We also went on a day trip to Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia. It's a really easy journey, and you can go by car, coach, or train. But we chose a boat trip down the River Danube. Okay, it was the slowest form of transport, but it was also the most beautiful journey. Once we arrived in the city, we went by taxi to the Kamzik TV Tower. That was one of my favourite experiences of the whole trip. It's nearly two hundred meters high, and it's on a hill, so it's got amazing views. On a good day, you can even see the Czech Republic, Austria, and Hungary too. Yeah, that was a great trip. Thanks, Dan and Lily. Those cities sound amazing. I haven't been to any of them, but now I really want to go. What about you, Callum? What's your favourite city? Ah,、uh, Edinburgh, of course. It's the best city in the world. But now we want to hear all about your favourite city breaks. Where do you think we should go? <laughs> That's right. 
Tell us where you've been or give us your suggestions in the comments. But that's it from us, so see you next time. Bye. Getting around in Oslo Oslo, Norway's capital, is a brilliant place to visit for a city break. With a ticket called Ruta, you can travel on long and short journeys on many different forms of public transport, including Oslo's underground system, or metro, which has five lines and over 100 stations in the centre. You can also use the ticket on city buses and coaches, which take you across Norway. There are also electric trams, which go all over the city. These even travel to Oslo Airport if you need to catch a flight home. If you prefer to travel by car, you'll find taxis everywhere too. As Oslo is small, you can easily get around by bike or on foot. And when the weather is good, why not try one of the many boat trips to the islands? You'll enjoy amazing views of Oslo and its incredible fjords from the sea. I wanted to travel and see the world before starting my career. I set off from Scotland in July and flew to Moscow. Moscow was the start of my adventure and my trip across Russia and China on the Trans-Siberian Express. You can do it in about six days if you don't stop at all. But one of the best things about the Trans-Siberian Express is that you can get on and off along the way and look around places. It's a slow way to travel, but that's what I loved. Travelling around the world is the best decision I've ever made. I'm living the dream. I've met so many great people and seen so many beautiful places. My wife and I weren't happy in our jobs. We wanted to go to Turkey, but we didn't want to fly there. We wanted a real adventure. My wife suggested driving there, so we sold our house, bought a big car, and then told the children. They were really excited. It has been a great experience. The car has only broken down once. That was in Hungary. We were worried that it was the end of the adventure. We didn't want to go back home. Luckily, a family stopped and helped us. We've all learned a lot and we've all become much, much closer. I love sport and I love South American culture. So I thought the best thing to do was a cycling trip in South America. I set off from Argentina last August. A year later and here I am back in Argentina. It has been the best year of my life. I've cycled through wind, rain and snow. I've ridden up and down beautiful mountains in Argentina. I've been through pretty little villages in Brazil. The bike really is the best way to get around. It gives you so much freedom to look around. London to Sydney by land is one of the greatest adventures. I decided to try and do the 28,000 kilometre trip by public transport. I've visited 25 countries. I've been on 10 boats, 30 buses, 
15 trains. I've taken two car rides. I've also taken one flight. Well, one and a half flights. I didn't have much time, so I decided to fly from Singapore to Indonesia and not take a boat. The plane took off on time. Everything was fine. Then suddenly the weather became really bad. In the end, I went back to Singapore. So I checked into a hotel near the airport and waited for the next flight to Indonesia. I hate flying. Why are we slowing down, Amar? Are we at the airport? No, Dad. We've stopped outside the city centre. Why is the driver talking on the phone? What's the problem? I think the tram has broken down, Dad. Really? Oh, this is terrible. What if they can't repair it? We're going to arrive late at the airport. And we're going to miss our flight. Why didn't we leave earlier, Amar? Don't panic, Dad. Try to stay calm. Oh, you're right. But it's a bad time for the tram to break down. Yes, it is. But I'm sure we can find a solution. Let's make a plan. What time is it now? Um, uh, it's half past ten. Right. Our flight leaves in one hour, forty minutes, and the airport is about three kilometres away. Um, can we walk there? Well, it's forty-five minutes on foot. We've got two big suitcases, and it's a busy road. So, I don't think that's a good idea, Dad. Ah, uh, you are right, Amar. So, what are our options? Well, there are buses to the airport. Can you see any bus stops near here? No, I can't. Oh, dear. Do you have any other suggestions? What's our plan B? Well... How long does it take to drive to the airport? That's a good question. But I don't know the answer, I'm afraid. So, let's find out. <laughs> this online map says the journey is only eight minutes. Let's go by taxi. But where are we going to find a taxi around here? Let's book one on the internet. Are you sure that's a good idea, Amar? Yes, Dad. I've travelled with this company many times. Have you got any better ideas? No, no, I haven't. Let's go with your plan. Ah, brilliant. I've received a message from a taxi driver. He's started his journey and he's going to be here in five minutes. Quick, Dad. Let's get off the tram now. Oh, thanks, Amar. You're the best. Um, Mum, have you ever lost anything important? No, I haven't. Um, why are you asking me that? Um, because I've searched everywhere for my passport and I still haven't found it. Maybe you've packed it. Have you taken everything out of your suitcase? Yes, I have. And it isn't in there. OK. Have you checked your backpack? Oh, no. I haven't looked in there. Um. Oh. oh, it isn't in there either. This is the last call for passengers for flight 245 to Prague. This is the last call for passengers for flight 245 to Prague. Oh no, that's our flight. They've started getting on the plane. Um, oh, what are our options? Uh, we haven't asked at the lost luggage office. Let's try there first. 
Uh, um, excuse me, please. Has anybody given you a lost passport today? No, they haven't, but I've just arrived. Oh, wait, there's a note here. Um, it says that somebody has found a passport. It was in the women's bathroom. What's your name, please? It's Sophia. Sophia Costa? Is this your passport? <gasps> yes! Yes, it is! Oh, thank you so much! Oh, come on, Sophia. Let's run. Gate 21 has closed. Gate 21 has closed. <gasps> no! They've closed our gate! We're too late! Oh, we've missed our flight. I'm so sorry, Mum. <sighs> Falls Hostel, how can I help you? Hello. I'd like some information about your guest house, please. I've never been to Ontario. What's your address? It's 9678 Oakwood Road. And we're only three kilometres away from the falls. How long does it take to get to the falls? It takes about 40 minutes on foot. Or there are buses which leave every half an hour. The journey takes under five minutes. Thanks. What types of tours are there? There are day trips with tour guides which include a boat trip between the 1st of May and the 29th of November, and a visit to the Niagara Falls History Museum from 5 to 7 p.m. Great! Have you got any rooms free in July? When are you thinking of coming? We're thinking of coming on the 25th of July, and going back on the 4th of August. And how many people are there? Me and my four friends. So there are five of us. One moment, please. We have a single and two twin rooms available, or a family room where up to eight guests can stay. How much do they cost? A single room is $35 a night. A twin room costs $48 a night. But our family room is more expensive, at $110 a night. Which one would you prefer? I'll need to ask the others. Can I call you back later? Of course. Our reception is open until half past eight tonight. After that, you'll need to call our mobile number, 905-453-8922. 905-453-8922? Yes, that's right. Thank you for calling. Speak to you later. Bye. I'd like some information about your hotel, please. Have you ever been to the Netherlands? Yes, I've been twice, but I've never visited Amsterdam. Where exactly are you? We're 10 kilometers away from Amsterdam. How long does it take to get to the city centre? It takes half an hour by bike or 20 minutes by tram. When are you thinking of coming? On the 5th of June and going back on the 9th. So, four nights. And how many people are there? There are six of us. We have three twin rooms available. How much do they cost? Each room costs 45 euros a night, so 135 euros in total. 
Hello and welcome to the Travel Show. Today we found some of the best short breaks you can go on in autumn between the months of September and November. The first break I'd like to talk about is in the beautiful city of Seville in Spain. You can take this break early in October. I've been to Seville many times. And it really is a very beautiful city. Now you'll have a three-night stay in an excellent hotel. I've stayed here myself, and I can tell you it's one of the nicest in Seville. The hotel is only fifteen minutes on foot from the Parque de Maria Luisa, which is one of the most beautiful parks I've seen in a city. The cost of this break includes flight and hotel, including breakfast, but you can pay for some extras. For example, you can take a guided tour. You'll see all the most famous buildings in Seville. I've never been on this myself, but I've heard good things. There is also the option of a day trip to the very pretty village of Ronda. Which is a two-hour journey by coach, and is a lovely day out.